Dale Jr. announces where he'll be racing at in his Xfinity starts this year, and NASCAR now has control of Bowman Gray Stadium. So yesterday we talked about how Dale Jr. is not making his return to the NASCAR Cup Series after seven years away, but he will be making his annual NASCAR Xfinity Series start this year, and he'll be doing it once again at Bristol Motor Speedway in the fall. The same place that he did it last year, although he ran two races last year, Bristol and then Homestead. The same place where he led 47 laps at last year was in contention for the win until he literally caught himself on fire and had to hop out of the car and then was super excited. He was really excited to go down and show everybody like, y'all see that I caught on fire. I'm wearing green pants today, too, because why not? I can do whatever I want. It's Thursday. Regardless, Dale went down, and he ran really, really well. And Hellman's was on the car, and they'll be on the car once again. And JRM also announced that they've extended their partnership with JR or with Hellman's rather through the 2026 season. And by the end of that 2026 season, it will have been an 18-year partnership for the two of them, which is honestly almost unheard of this day and age when it comes to sponsorships, especially with race teams. So that's great. Send it off to college. It's old enough to go uh, and vote now. It will also include at least six races on the number seven car each year through the 2026 season, as well as whatever starts Dale would like to make. So he's going to have to park that fifth wheel, call TJ Majors up and beg him to come spot for him at the fall race at Bristol because he's once again going to be trying to make another start there. Obviously, he's going to have to qualify, but we all are going to assume that he will do that. And I'm excited to see what he can do because like last year, he was in contention for the win. He looked really, really good. And Bristol's one of those tracks that like as soon as you get into your rhythm again, it all just kind of comes back together. And Dale definitely got back into his rhythm very quickly. And honestly, Dale coming back and running his one race a year, it's comforting. It's like pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving or the Cowboys losing in the first round of the playoffs. You know it's coming every year, once a year, and you get really happy about it. You mark it on your calendar like the Masters, and then you get giddy like a waffle belly when a driver walks by when you know that the date's coming up really soon. And that's how Dale Jr. and his Xfinity Series uh, race always seems to go. Everybody gets super hyped up for it. They sell a lot of merch. They sell a lot more tickets generally to that Xfinity race than they do most Xfinity races. And everybody leaves happy because they get to to see a NASCAR living legend go out there and, you know, wheel the car one more time and wheel it competitively at that. If he was going out there and being a backmarker like he was Daryl Waltrip at the end of his career or, you know, when Dale Jarrett went and drove the 44 car for Michael Waltrip Racing, that was a mistake. Things like that. Although there was a lot more than just him driving that car, which was a mistake at NWR, but whew, we won't get into that one right now. Either way, Dale coming back is great for everybody. And like I said, it's an extension on the partnership. So he can keep having those Hellman's mayonnaise banana sandwiches, which honestly look vomit inducing to me. I haven't thrown up in probably the better part of two decades at this point. The internet and the comments that I get on TikTok seem to think that I am maybe like 24 years old. That is couldn't be further from the truth. I appreciate that you think I'm young. But yeah, I don't think I've thrown up in like 20 years. Got an iron stomach or just this pure impulse to never want to throw up. I, I will fight my own body to make sure I don't do that. But if you put a banana mayonnaise sandwich into my mouth, I will vomit 100%. Got a lot of food texture things I don't like. Kiwis, avocados, jello. I can't do jello at all. Pudding, yogurt. I'm very odd. Moving on though, for the sake of everybody's ears, Dale has the perfect job out there, if we're being completely honest. Made a ton of money. Now he gets to go out and just run, you know, whatever select cars tour races that he wants to do for the late model stock series and run an Xfinity race or two every single year. It does seem like he will only be running one race this year. Last year he ran at Bristol, and then a couple weeks later he ran at Homestead, where he came home fifth at Homestead, so he can still get out there and wheel it on a short track and on an intermediate. Seems like he'll just be doing Bristol this year as well. Moving on to the other big story of Thursday, that would be NASCAR taking over operations at Bowman Gray Stadium. Oh, before we get into it, I made a few minor changes to the background here. If anybody in the comments can note what changed, that'd make me happy. I actually don't have anything to, I don't have any break card merch at the moment that I'm capable of giving away, mainly because I've worn it all. But maybe in the future we'll do that. But I did change a few things back here. There's two, two additions, if you can find it. But NASCAR in the city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, announced on Thursday that NASCAR has taken over operations and the lease of Bowman Gray Stadium through the 2050 season. And you're like, 2050 is a long way away. It's not, honestly. When you think about it, it's really not that far. It's actually kind of 
disturbing how close it is. It's only six years away. Ty Gibbs will be 48 years old by the time that rolls around. Probably retired from the Cup Series at that point. Chase Elliott will be 55 years old. Roger Penske is going to be 113 years old. Will likely still be around. Will likely be chasing his like 40th Indy 500 and somehow will show up to the racetrack. He'll be just a floating head of a bionic body or something to go along with that because I don't think that guy's ever going to go away. Uh, It just continues to suck all the creative soul out of IndyCar. This topic for a different day at this point. But 2050 seems like a long way away. So NASCAR will take over operations of the famed quarter mile short track, uh, which does have a football field in the center. That's why the the series can't go really past the end of August if it has to, because the Winston-Salem College needs to be able to use the stadium for their football games. And so NASCAR taking over Bowman Gray, I think, is a great move. I know there's going to be a ton of people in Winston-Salem, a ton of people that go to the weekly uh, Saturday night races there that are going to hate this move. But Bowman Gray had gotten out of control. It was complete and utter chaos. We had people using their cars as weapons, and it was getting sketchier than a hotel with the weekly rate on the sign outside, so they had to go in there and make a change. It was just out of control. People using their cars as weapons is never a bad thing. NASCAR coming in and instituting some sort of law and order here, unlike the institutional chaos that was Bowman Gray Stadium, is not a bad thing. It's still going to give Tim Brown, the Myers Brothers, and Chris Fleming, the showstopper, a place to go race at, and a place to still go out there and beat the crap out of everybody because that's what Bowman Gray is. Bowman Gray is not really racing. It's a single lane racetrack and the only way to pass somebody is to move them out of the way. It's just a whole race of bump and runs and if you love that, if you loved old Bristol, yeah, just go watch Bowman Gray because that's exactly what it is. While it is wildly entertaining, it's really never that great of a show if we're being completely honest, but when you pack 15,000 people into that stadium, it gets a little nuts. I've never seen so many people flipping things off children literal children out here just yelling obscene things at race car drivers i was like oh my gosh i remember when i was a kid my parents were like do you guys swear when we're not around and my brother and i were like no we would never do that and soon we walked outside we were like f yes we do (laughs) and that's exactly what we're seeing here except their parents are encouraging them the culture at bowman gray stadium honestly should be studied because it is this subculture that i am fascinated by i actually think i might be making a stop to the stadium uh april 27th i paused there because i was like man i don't know if i want to say that because there are certainly some people that probably don't like me i will not be wearing break hard merch to that fuck you youtube But a lot of NASCAR fans, of course, are going to say, like, oh, does this mean that we're going to get a NASCAR Cup Series race at Bowman Gray? No, it doesn't really seem like it's going to happen, at least not in the near future. Ben Kennedy said, of course, you know, there's a chance that maybe it could, but that's not the plan right now. Running the Clash there would be incredibly too cold in February. I don't think people realize Winston-Salem is not exactly Miami, Florida. It's not going to be very warm. And the All-Star race is an SMI date, so there would have to be some sort of uh, reciprocity Yes, between the two. Meaning that, you know, SMI, if they're going to give the all-star race, ISC is going to have to give them a date for something else or something along those lines. So it doesn't seem like that's going to happen right now. And honestly, I don't really want to see stock cars, at least, you know, Gen 7 cup cars, go around Bowman Gray Stadium. Now, if you put a truck race there, truck races are already general chaos. So maybe it wouldn't be that different from what we see most weekends. But they used to run what is now Arca East there as well, which was sometimes interesting. Uh, But either way, it is good that NASCAR now has control of Bowman Gray Stadium. Of course, it does have a lot of NASCAR history. They've been hosting weekly races there since 1949. Bill France Jr. met his wife there, Betty Jane, in 1957. The NASCAR lineage runs through Bowman Gray. Richard Childress, of course, famously sold peanuts in the grandstands there. Chocolate Myers, again. Bowman Gray has played a huge part of NASCAR history, and it's nice that NASCAR now has control of that to ensure that it will continue on. And the Hawkins family, which uh, had previously been operating, will stay on to also continue to help out with the operations for their 76th season of racing at Bowman Gray Stadium this year. So let me know in the comments what you think about Dale Jr. and his race at Bristol coming up, as well as NASCAR's newfound acquisition of Bowman Gray Stadium, or at least on the operations side. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.